the most epic fight continues as the strongest and tameless Shikigami Mahoraga enters the ring. Limitless Gojo reaches his limit, but there are even more crazy twists after that. So make sure to stay tuned for this one. Smash that like button if you enjoy seeing these Jujutsu Kaisen reviews on the channel and want to keep them coming. Place your bets for who you think is going to win right now in the comments. Gojo or Sukuna and you'll have bragging rights for life. And lastly, make this the video you join the fan by subscribing and hitting that notification bell if you haven't already so you don't miss future Jujutsu Kaisen updates. And now without further ado, let's jump to the main event of main events, spoilers and all. So as we saw, Mahoraga aka Destruction Incarnate, as the narrator calls him, has entered the ring. This chapter is called The Decisive Battle in the Uninhabited, Demon Infested Shinjuku Part 8. And not gonna lie, I always kind of thought it was cool that this mangaka could get away with not worrying about titles for so many chapters like this by just counting up until he's done with whatever is happening. I personally haven't seen that often, but respect. And in my lifetime I had to come up with many titles for essays and videos, so I can just say it's nice when you don't have to. So it's pointed out that, as we know, Mahoraga is the crown jewel of the Zenin clan and that it's a Shikigami with the ability to adapt to any attack. And Yuji for his part is shocked by the possibility that it was even able to adapt to Gojo's unlimited void. We get some beautiful panels giving us a sense of a short calm before the storm continues. We see how big the Shikigami is and even the edges can't contain him. I love that detail. I also gotta say in the middle of this fight, I love how the mangaka takes the time to even illustrate the birds flying overhead in an artistic way. Not expected, but definitely appreciated. We're told Gojo was well aware of Mahoraga's abilities. In his battle with Yorozu, Sukuna used Mahoraga's adaptation ability for himself in order to see through her construction technique. There's definitely quite a bit of explaining and text going on in this chapter, but it's okay because it's in a cool way like in Death Note, so it works. With that in mind, we're told the domain expansion's sure hit effects cancelled each other out a total of 5 times. Gojo's sure hit effect targeted everything within the domain and Sukuna's targeted everything within the domain except himself. Which meant that the sure hit effect targeting Sukuna was still in place. You gotta respect how deep the mangaka goes with these fighting mechanics. Sukuna continued to take on Unlimited Void 5 times, all while shouldering the burden of Mahoraga's adaptation and the one who actually bore this burden was and it's Gojo that tells us it was Megumi's soul. He is the one taking the damage to use the adaptation. Even Gojo is shocked and impressed, which is the best thing about this fight since he's usually so confident. And you gotta appreciate the small talk and the trash talk between these two overconfident legends. Sukuna says, you look like you have something on your mind, as he sees Gojo trying to wrap his head around what happened. And Gojo responds, not really, it just warms my heart seeing you so desperate. I personally can't help but laugh and enjoy these back and forths. Even Sukuna laughs, saying, look who's talking. Sukuna explains, confidently that he knew Unlimited Void would be a real pain, that's why his first move was to take that card out of the deck. As mentioned, he had Megumi adapt to Unlimited Void using his 10 Shadows technique. As a result, Sukuna couldn't use any cursed technique other than what was imbued to his domain, and he supposes that paid off in its own way. Gojo for his part says Megumi just took on the process of adaptation not the resulting adaptation. So Sukuna hasn't actually adapted Megumi's soul itself to Unlimited Void. If he opens his domain expansion again, Mahoraga won't be able to bail Sukuna out because Gojo will destroy it in one attack, he says. Now let's appreciate how hype and confident Gojo is here. It looks like he's about to win. But then we see Sukuna and he just laughs in a carefree way. He simply tells him that Gojo can no longer use his domain and he turns out to be right. Gojo's domain isn't launched, instead blood floods from his nose. And our viewers are understandably shocked and worried to see this, even though it was hinted at earlier if you recall the smaller nosebleed earlier that Yuta took note of. It's explained that using reverse curse technique to heal your exhausted innate technique strains you on a whole other level compared to normal reverse curse technique healing. As Sukuna explains, curse technique is etched into your brain roughly around your right prefrontal cortex. Gojo has been using his cursed energy to damage his own brain and then using reverse curse technique to refresh the burnt out technique. Yuta screams that even using that once is way too risky. We're told the brain and especially the part where curse techniques are concerned is a black box, and props to this manga for teaching me new things. A black box, apparently, in computer science, is a system that operates as we have no knowledge of its internal workings. In other words, it's a lot more dangerous and complicated to mess with than just thinking about healing and doing it. Choso says based on that, Gojo should already be at death's door, as brother Yuji points out that he's done it five times already. 
Shoko points out something interesting saying that she thought Gojo had been getting used to healing his brain. And that's definitely what it seemed like from the outside since we always like to think of Gojo as untouchable. But now it seems to her that he's suffering the sequelae. Another thing I learned thanks to this chapter. Thank you Jujutsu Kaisen. The word in medicine means a condition which is the consequence of a previous disease or injury. In other words, Gojo's previous damaging of his brain over and over again is catching up with him now. It doesn't just fully heal every time he uses healing. Shoko says Sukuna's done it fewer times and so he has more leeway than Gojo here. Sukuna chimes in as Gojo's on his knee now, saying you've reached a limit completely separate from healing your flesh and bones. He goes so far as to say that if Gojo could expand his domain again, he'd perish the moment he did. And on top of that, he wouldn't be precise enough to oppose Sukuna. Just as moments ago, Gojo seemed in control, now Sukuna seems in control by a mile. But what's an epic battle like this without even more twists and turns? As Sukuna is hyping himself up on and on, saying he's going to do this and that, going to close the barrier of his domain so Gojo can't run, going to carve Gojo into pieces and even adapt to his infinity, and says this is goodbye and that Gojo was born in an era without Sukuna and hailed to be the strongest, and yet turned out to be so ordinary. My point is, he just keeps going and going, but when it comes down to it and he activates his domain expansion, he himself starts bleeding and it's even worse than Gojo. Not just from the nose, but from the eyes as well. The narrator lets us know that it hadn't even been 10 seconds since Sukuna took a blow from Unlimited Void. And yet, just like Gojo, Sukuna's brain sustained enough damage to make domain expansion impossible. And now, just like that, Gojo is the one laughing in an over-the-top way like the Joker, saying looks like it's hitting you pretty damn hard. He says his students are watching so he's going to keep showing off. Props to Sukuna too, he's still smiling himself despite how damaged he looks. Now after the domain expansions have been exhausted, at least for now, we jump into a fist fight and Gojo gets such a satisfying punch in. But keep in mind, we see the Shikigami's wheel spinning, so we'll see Sukuna drawing on his adaptation powers as well. And after the punch, ironically, Sukuna's eyes look recovered compared to moments before. They are both smiling and we're told neither yields. The decisive battle of the strongest heads to round 2. Love to hear that because it sounds like we'll be getting a lot more awesomeness and there's no fight more hype. We're also told the loneliness that comes with unrivaled strength, the one who will teach you about love is. And that's where it cuts off. Interesting to mention love here, we'll see what that's going to be about, let me know if you have any theories in the comments. But the loneliness that comes with unrivaled strength is a good line. We should keep in mind that for Gojo, finally he has a challenge and so that loneliness is gone for once. You can bet he's enjoying this challenge, at least in that regard. Another amazing chapter of this epic fight, don't forget to place your bets on who's winning in the comments and if you can't get enough of strong characters like me, then be sure to check out our special grade sorcerers and their powers explained video where we discuss the strongest of the strong link on screen right now and i'll see you there